Hey everybody, it is Matthew of Mr. Domestic, where I spread joy and positivity through sewing and fabric play. This video is going to be a quilting 101 soup to nuts video for the novice beginner curious quilter who wants to get going but doesn't know how to get started. So I'm going to walk you through how I do it the simplest way so that you will be able to tackle this amazingly fun technique of sewing. So before we get into the content, anytime you're enjoying it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So let's have some fun. The first part of this video is gonna be all about supplies. And once again, I'm not gonna give you options. I'm going to just make it as simple as possible for you that if you follow these instructions, and you are nervous about quilting, you'll be able to get from beginning to end. So the first thing that you need, I'm not doing any piecing in this video. It's all about quilting. So this is what's called a whole cloth quilt. And I have two one and a half yard cuts of fabric. I've had it in my stash forever. And then I just had the idea to make this. Here's one, here's another. So one is going to be the front and one is going to be the back. And the width of fabric on this is 44 inches. Uh, it's standard width of fabric for quilters cotton is between like 40 and 46. This is 44. And then I have a yard and a half. So in inches, this is, I don't know, like 50 or 60. I kind of just estimated it, but it's, let's just say it's 40 by 60. That's gonna be the size. <laughs> So you know, two pieces of fabric that are the same size, 40 by 60, let's go with it. Then you need some batting. I'm using this one because it was in my closet and it was white because I wanted white because I'm using white fabric and I haven't tried this one before, but things that you need to know about batting. And I'll take a picture so you can look at it now that right here, it marks on here. Every batting says how far apart you can quilt or the distance between stitch lines. If you go further than that, then it could impact the longevity of the batting. And so this one, it says 10 inches apart. That's pretty generous for batting. Uh, a lot of times it's between four and five inches, but 10 inches is great. I'm definitely gonna fit into that. And there are a lot of different kinds of battings out there. There's like darker, lighter, wool, cotton poly, Super duper overwhelming. People ask me all the time, does it matter? I mean, it does, but not really. For the purpose of this, just grab some batting that fits what you need. I would suggest like a cotton poly blend for your first time because it'll quilt easy and it won't be so thick and dense that it's hard to push through. So that's my recommendation there. And I'll have all of this in the description here. So I don't sweat, you don't have to write it down now. And then you'll need a walking foot. I'm gonna do straight line quilting because that's the easiest. A walking foot will, it has, it kind of like has an imitation feed dog on the top, so it helps push the quilt sandwich through. And then quilting gloves. I did not know about quilting gloves for like a year, year and a half. This changes everything to where you don't have to muscle and you won't get any cramps on your hands. Totally would suggest getting quilting gloves. And then I spray based. I don't want to mess with safety pins. If you want to do the safety pin method, totally fine. You just put safety pins in ever so often, but I use spray adhesive. 505, I've tried a whole bunch. 505 is the best in my opinion. So I would suggest getting this, but if it's not available where you are, any kind of spray adhesive that you can get at a craft store will totally work. This one is not permanent, it's temporary. So look for the temporary fabric adhesive. Then you need some thread. You need a universal needle on your sewing machine. You definitely need a sewing machine. And that is everything that you will need to get going on a whole cloth quilting project, Quilting 101 with Mr. Domestic. Okay, so I'm in my kitchen because there's enough space for me to lay this all out. And I'm gonna show you how I baste it and get it started. So I have the two pieces and I have my batting right here. It's a little wider than I need. So I'll trim that off after I put the fabric on it. But I'm gonna use the edge right here just to line up the fabric. And ta-da. If it gets all lumpy bumpy, don't worry about it because 
the spray adhesive is repositionable. It's temporary and you can move it around. But then one tip that I've learned with spray adhesive is I do not spray the batting. I spray the fabric because if you spray the batting, a lot of the adhesive will get inside of the batting and it won't allow the fabric to stick as much as it can. So here's my spray adhesive. Spray it on the wrong side of the fabric. Boom, boom, boom. And if it gets on my floor, I'm not really worried about it. It's not permanent, so it'll just wash up super easy. But try not to get on the floor. <laughs> So now I'm, I've got my fabric here, and I'm going to try to line it up with the edge of the batting. If you want to leave a little excess batting just in case, go for it. But I found with the spray adhesive, it doesn't go anywhere. So you want to try and minimize the lumpy bumpiness. right here and smooth it all out. Just pick it up and move it and smooth it out like this. And I'll fast forward so you don't have to like watch me smooth it out in real time. So this one is, is done beautifully. I came up with the system. It always happens when I'm filming a video that I come up with a better way to do it. And so I'm gonna show you how I did it when I put on the black. But now I'm just trimming off the excess so I don't have to mess with it. And then you can put it in like a bin or somewhere in your closet or on your shelf so that you can use it later if you wanna make pillows or Put it together and make drink and batting. Oh, okay. Get this excess out of the way. Ta-da! Okay, so now because of the, the adhesive, it's not gonna go anywhere. Like, it's good. I'm gonna flip it over. Boom. And once again, I'm going to Go to town with my adhesive here. And I don't really spray right on the outside, like the, um, the perimeter. I do it all in the center because that's the part that would shift if you don't use it. Ta-da! And I do want to know where the top is here so that I can line them up. And then I'm going to take the other edge and line it up on this batting. And then I'll show you the system that I came up with that, that made it a lot easier to do. Making the bed, making the bed, making the bed. Okay, so now it's just about lined up. Boom, boom, boom. This is going to be a super cute little quilt, like a snuggle quilt. Okay, so it's even, right? On this edge. Let me just get this out. And to get all the lumpy bumpies, you probably saw it when I was doing the the fast forward. Oh, this one actually came out really good. <laughs> but I'm gonna show you what I did. Let's say that there were lumpy bumpies in it. Then I'm going to lift this up, like toward the middle, right? And then flatten this out, make sure that it's flat. And then, see I grab it like this, and I just gradually 
See? Gradually do this. And then yeah, try to flatten it out. And this will get out all of the lumpy bumpies. Like this. Ta-da! I came up with something right now, folks. Ding ding ding. And then I do need to do the other side. A little bit. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna keep this in real time just so that y'all can see it. And then slowly lower the fabric onto it. Boom. And now it is perfect. So, okay. The next thing that you could do, and this is a you could do, if you're um, wanting it to be like super perfect, is that you need a ruler. And this is something called a hair marker. I'll show you a picture of it now. But essentially what this does is it will create a crease on here that you can use to sew on top of. And it's an alternate alternative to like um, Taylor's chalk or a friction pen that's erasable. This, you don't have to worry about it doing anything. And I also, okay. So this is another tip. Ugh. And I do this with like all, all of my quilts and stuff. I know that the, the lights are bad, but um, find either like a backing fabric or your main fabric that have lines in it, like a plaid or a stripe, and then you don't have to mark anything. And you can just sew over the lines that are in it. This one kind of has it, and I'm probably going to end up estimating like as I go, but I want to show you how you can mark it too. So this one, I'm just gonna do straight lines like this. And this is about two inches. So I'm going to mark, like trying to get it in the middle between these two. Ooh, can you see it? I hope you can see it with the camera. But I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna do this one line and then take it over to my sewing machine so I can show y'all how to quilt it. Okay, you see that you see that line right there? Right there. It'll stay there long enough for you to quilt it. But before you transport this to your sewing room, you want to roll it up and I would make this as thin as possible so that it will fit into the throat. And I'm actually gonna start down here. I'm gonna mark this off camera and start down here since it's already rolled up. So first I'm going to baste around the perimeter of the quilt and using this stitch length. So if you've never basted it before, essentially it's a longer stitch length just to keep it in place. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I have my walking foot on. Oh, let me move the camera. <laughs> okay, I have my walking foot on. And since this is a longer stitch length, if you don't get like a quarter inch seam allowance, it's totally fine because you can take it out really easy. But see how that walking foot is just doing the work? I'm not pushing it through really. What this, what, what these quilting gloves are for is to make sure that everything is flat and then you let the machine do its work. See? Um, and I'm just gonna go around the entire perimeter. I'm gonna fast forward, you don't have to see it in real time. I have changed the stitch because I'm going to quilt and I like to quilt at three millimeter. I just think that's a nice aesthetic length. And let me back it up so that you can see it. I rolled this back up and then as I go through here, I'm gonna roll it 
this way until I get to about the middle, and then I'll flip it around and do the other side, just so that it doesn't get too bulky on this side. But here, now I just go. And I'm doing it slower than I would normally, just because I'm, I'm aware that my camera's shaking a bit, folks. <laughs> and then I just quilt, 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 see? I am quilting. It is fun. <laughs> and then um, you don't have to watch that. I mean, you see the line that I'm following right here. Then once again, you can either mark or not mark. Probably after this, I'm going to estimate because I'm good with that. And I'm fast forwarding now. One thing, one more thing that I wanted to show you is that with these, this is a high loft, which means it's like bouncy, it's buoyant. So what I do with these is I make sure to flatten it. See, it's flattened as opposed to poofy, flattened and poofy. And then I pull ever so slightly because it's going to pucker, which it'll do this. So to avoid the puckering and make sure that it goes all the way through without puckering, I just down, press, and then pull a little bit to the side. See, it just, it's just, it's trying to pucker, but because of what I'm doing, it's not allowing it. Whereas if I did that, it would just, it would be a hot mess if I did like that. So that's another tip, y'all. Okay, fast forward. I stopped the fast forward because the camera was getting in my way, but I wanted to show you this here. See, this is me rolling it up on this side, and that is the center stitch line right there. So now I'm going to take this and then start the process on the other side so that it doesn't get bulky right there in the throat of Alfonso. So yay! I'm going to continue stitching, and you'll see me again when I... So the next thing that... I'm going to show you, and the final thing in this video is squaring off the quilt. Once you've finished quilting your quilt, you need to square it off. And I always start on a corner, and I'll just find something here, just to make sure that it's square. So, how does that look, how does that look, how does that look? Okay, I'm gonna go by the lines here, just to square it off, okay. And then why I start on the corner is because then I can use this and it'll start the vertical line right here, right? Like this. And like that. See, I've done that. And now this one is square, square, square. Don't have to worry about it. And I can follow the lines all the way down. And then there is another corner. And I can show you that one more time. I use that line, that line. And then, dun, 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 dun. and once again, this will be easier if you use a fabric with stripes or like a grid on it. It just becomes easier to do all this kind of stuff. Ta-da! And I'll fast forward, but I want you to see me squaring it off. I know some of y'all are like, but hey, the edges are raw. What are you going to do with the uh, raw edges? And that, you bind your quilts. And that's a whole different process that needs a video on its own. And I have one, and I'll card it right here for you. But for the quilting soup to nuts, this is all you need. So yay! You can tackle this Quilting 101 project and jump into the quilting game. Legit, it's super fun. You're going to love it. I promise. And if you have any questions along the way, feel free to leave it in the comments and I will answer them. So if you got any tips or tricks in this video or got a laugh or two, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Keep it positive, y'all. Mr. Domestic out. <laughs>